is hosting a high-octane circus. Loud, fast and politically charged. This is NASCAR. The United States' fastest growing sport. More than 60,000 fans have turned up and the hills around the track have been turned into campgrounds. These men have been here for two days. They've even brought their own oven for some down-home southern barbecue. This is the heart of NASCAR and the people around here, you talk to anybody in this campground, and they're going to have a lot of background. Their fathers and mothers took them to the track when they were kids. So you're right in the middle of it right now. It's kind of an American tradition. The sound of the cars, man, just roaring. That's what we want to hear. Horsepower, raw horsepower. NASCAR is also a potent political symbol. It's very popular in the southern states, and many of the fans are white men who traditionally be aligned to the Democrats but are voting Republican, largely because of their conservative views on abortion, gay rights and gun control. The NASCAR culture has become something of a symbolic representation in American politics of a certain constituency of voters. And so we've seen in recent campaigns that the social cultural issues for these voters have trumped their economic self-interest in their voting decisions largely because they see the Democratic Party's principles on social and cultural issues as completely anathema to them. Clean spot right there. there That's why NASCAR fans are so popular with politicians. Outside the track is someone who's competing in a different race. George Allen is a Republican senator and he's up for re-election. He's a strong supporter of the war in Iraq. We want our troops home as soon as possible, but we want them coming home in victory, not defeat. And we need, to, we need to win this war against these, these vile, hate-filled, maniacal, extremist, radical terrorist organizations because we just can't put our heads under a pillow and think they're going to go away. I'll just talk to you on the phone. <laughs> George Allen is a former governor and the son of a legendary gridiron coach. He wears cowboy boots and chews tobacco. The NASCAR crowd loves him and his hard line on terrorism. United States safety, that's, that's the main priority, you know what I mean? Because I know it's, it, it put a lot of havoc on everything 9/11, you know. So we, yeah, we. I'm gonna, that's that's one reason I want to keep my guns. Somebody tries to come to my door, you know, you know, neighbor's door, same way. The Democrat challenger is Jim Webb, a Vietnam War hero and Secretary of the Navy under Ronald Reagan, a Republican. Webb's a writer of best-selling novels and Hollywood screenplays. He also chews tobacco, but instead of cowboy boots, he wears army boots. They belong to his son, who's serving in Iraq. What you've seen over the last six years is a, a war that is an incredible strategic blunder of historic proportions. We're now getting, the American people are now beginning to understand how bad that decision was. And then what part is you got out there in There are more than 50 war veterans running for Congress as Democrats. Some of them fought in Iraq. They're called the Fighting Dems, and it's part of a deliberate strategy. Although Republicans in some campaigns have characterized Democratic opponents of the war in Iraq as weak on defense, as taking public positions that hurt the American military and hurt our national interest abroad, the Republicans just can't say those things about Jim Webb right now. His own son is fighting in Iraq and he was a war he is a war hero himself. So in a sense he's got a big shield that protects him against those standard Republican attacks that are made in these campaigns. Hey gang, how y'all? George Allen's problems began when he singled out a web campaign worker who has dark skin. So welcome, let's give a welcome to Makaka here. Welcome to America and the real world of Virginia. It turns out Makaka is a racial slur in some cultures. Allen apologised but was soon dealing with claims he once kept a confederate flag in his living room, a noose in his office and regularly used the word nigger while at university. What I said is I don't recall using that word. But the stories were, were portraying it as if that word were part of my vocabulary, which it was not. And that was what's inaccurate. And then there's all sorts of absolutely ludicrous uh, stories as well. And I might Jim Webb has life. problems of his own. Revelations, he wrote an article in 1979 opposing women in combat and calling the mainly male dormitory at the Naval Academy a horny woman's dream. It's been 27 years. It's a magazine article. Uh, and it's a something, if, if, if I may say, I'm fully comfortable with the roles of women in the military today. But the personal attacks aren't the defining issue in this campaign. The Iraq war is. Jim Webb spoke out against the war well before the invasion. 
today is campaigning with the Democrats' rising star and possible 2008 presidential candidate, Barack Obama. For the next senator from the state of Virginia, Jim Webb, get up! Opinion polls suggest the war is the number one election issue for Virginians, just as it is for the rest of the country. Democrats are benefiting from that, even though they're vague about how or when they'll withdraw troops. If Jim Webb is elected to the Senate and other Democrats like him, will it have a practical effect on American foreign policy and the war in Iraq? Well, I think absolutely it'll have a, a, an impact. Look, uh, this was a war of choice, not necessity, driven by ideology. There was a lot of very astute military advice that was given before we went into Iraq that was deliberately ignored. And, you know, I would not have allowed that if I were sitting in the Senate. I can guarantee you that. that. Scores of Virginians have been killed in Iraq, and the continuing bloodshed is forcing something of a political retreat. George W. Bush no longer talks about staying the course, and his ally, George Allen, is changing tack too. We need to adjust in, a, in Iraq, as our Aussie friends and our British and others all realize that you need to adapt your tactics operationally. Even in this military-heavy, largely culturally conservative state, there is a strong sense in public opinion right now against the Bush presidency and against the war in Iraq as having been a mistake. And so Jim Webb is benefiting from that. There are still two weeks until polling day, but Democrats are getting confident and the Republicans nervous. As things stand right now, it looks like there's a Democratic surge taking place in the country. And if that surge continues, then we're likely to see the Democratic Party take control of both houses, which would be a very, very significant event. Significant because even though the White House won't change hands, the result could still change the face of the Bush presidency. Many are suggesting that, for example, if Bush and the Republicans lose control of the House and the Senate, Bush becomes the ultimate lame duck president for the last two years of his term, with the Democrats simply uh, taking control of the agenda in Congress and having the ability to conduct a variety of investigations against figures in the Bush administration. Makes the race in Virginia a high stakes contest. Both parties are pouring money into the state, well aware that the balance of power could depend on whether it's a pair of cowboy boots or army boots that crosses the finish line first.